kids, my name is Joycey Horsey. Are you ready to read with me? Yes, yes, yep, yep, yes! Yep, 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 yep. Okay, let's go! Before we begin our story, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Today, we are going to read the book, The Magic School Bus and the Time of the Dinosaurs. Are you ready? Let's begin. It was visitor's day at our school. Parents, relatives, and friends were coming that afternoon to see our work. In Miss Frizzle's class, we were making the whole room into dinosaur land. I love visitor's day. My parents are coming. My grandma's coming. I hope she likes my project. Suddenly, Miss Frizzle said, Please pay attention, children. I have wonderful news. I wonder what the good news is. Maybe it's lunchtime already. Maybe we don't have to learn all these dinosaur names. Our class has been invited to a dinosaur dig, explained the Frizz. We'll be leaving right away. As we went out, one kid grabbed the video camera. Others took along model dinosaurs for good luck. When you have the wackiest teacher in school, you need all the luck you can get. We're leaving now. I guess Miss Frizzle forgot about Visitor's Day. She never forgot anything before. We couldn't believe we had to get on that rickety old school bus again. Kids held their lucky dinosaurs tight and hoped for the best. My lucky dinosaur is Tyrannosaurus Rex. My lucky dinosaur is Stegosaurus. My lucky dinosaur is wondering if this old bus will make it. As we rolled onto the highway, Miss Frizzle shouted from the driver's seat. We're on our way to fossil country, kids. Who knows what a fossil is? Luckily, we had done our homework. We knew a fossil is anything left from a prehistoric animal or plant. This story is make-believe. There were no dinosaurs that time of cave people. After we had been driving for a long time, we came to a desert where people were working. Miss Frizzle said this was the dinosaur dig. The people were paleontologists, scientists who studied prehistoric life. Dinosaurs lasted for 150 million years on Earth. Weren't they amazing, Arnold? It's amazing that I've lasted this long in Miss Frizzle's class. Everyone at the dig was working hard, using all kinds of tools to separate the fossils from the rocks around them. I see you're still interested in dinosaurs, Jeff. Valerie, I haven't seen you since high school. The paleontologists told us that they have found the fossil bones of a duck-billed dinosaur called Miasara. She calls him Jeff? He calls her Valerie? They went to high school together? That must have been in prehistoric times. The paleontologist seemed sad. We're looking for fossil eggs, they said, but we haven't found any yet. We found the bones of some Mayasara dinosaurs, Valerie. We were hoping to find their nests. I didn't know her name was Valerie. We saw a gleam in Miss Frizzle's eye. Want to look for some Miyasara nest kids? She shouted. She rushed us onto the bus and drove off. But we just got here. I want to look at that crane. I want to see the dinosaur bone. See you later, Jeff. We hadn't gone far when Miss Frizzle stopped the bus. She turned a dial on the dashboard, and the bus began to change. It looked like a giant alarm clock. Miss Frizzle said it was a time machine. Now I've seen everything. This bus is getting ridiculous. Mayasaro were some of the very last dinosaurs on Earth. The hand on the clock started moving backward. One hour back, one day back, one year back, Outside the windows, the desert was whizzing by. 
1,000 years, 1 million years. We're on our way to the time of the Mayasara. Hang on, class, yelled the Frizz. The alarm went off. We heard Miss Frizzle say, Oops, we had a little machine trouble. We went back too far in time. But it's nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about? We missed the time of the Maya Sorrow by millions of years. Class, we're in the late Triassic period, the time of the early dinosaurs. You mean we're in the same place but in another time? You mean this is what that desert looked like 220 million years ago? Wow, it's a jungle out there. The frizz pointed to some dinosaurs that were hunting on the banks of a river. Their name is Silophysis, she said. These early dinosaurs were small and light. The giant dinosaurs did not develop until later. Silophysis have excellent teeth for eating meat. Their teeth have saw edges like steak knives. Try not to look like a steak. Suddenly, a large reptile rose out of the water and opened its huge mouth. That is not a dinosaur, Miss Frizzle said. It's a phytosaur, a crocodile-like reptile. The phytosaur caught a little dinosaur and pulled it underwater. We wanted to get back on the bus pronto, but Miss Frizzle said we had to learn about Triassic plant life. We were examining some ferns when Miss Frizzle shouted, Look at those terrific prosauropods! They were the first dinosaurs to eat plants. I just love Triassic plants, class. Don't you? Do you hear something? You mean those crunching sounds? Miss Frizzle isn't the only one who loves Triassic plants. A sudden downpour caught us by surprise. But the dinosaurs went right on eating. We ran for the bus and Frizzy called. Get ready to go forward in time, kids. In the tropical forest, rains are frequent and heavy, Arnold. Now she tells me. Jeff will love this video. The last things we saw before we took off were some small furry animals. Miss Frizzle said they were the first mammals. The hand on the clock moved ahead, and the Triassic rainforest whizzed out of sight. When will we see Mayasara eggs? Mayasara lived 106 million years from now. Let's see if we can find them. The alarm went off, and we heard Miss Frizzle say, Oh no! We had stopped too soon. It was the late Jurassic period, the age of giants. Here are some interesting tree trunks. Uh, I don't think so. Notice these sauropod dinosaurs, children, said Mrs. Frizzle. They were kind of impossible to miss. They were the largest land animals that ever lived. Sixty million years have passed since we were here last. Look! Those sauropods are swallowing their food whole. Their teeth are not good for chewing, Phoebe. They swallow stones to grind up food in their stomachs. It must take a lot of plants to feed a giant sauropod. Sauropods must spend most of their time eating. What a life! The footprints were made at the same time and they are all going in the same direction. Under a pile of leaves, we found some dinosaur eggs just about to hatch. Nearby some stegosaurs, plated dinosaurs, were eating plants. One of the stegosaurs had a hurt leg. Are they the Mayasara eggs? No, Keisha. Mayasara did not live in the Jurassic period. They came later, much later. Suddenly, an Allosaurus approached the wounded Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus' spiked tail lashed out. It missed Allosaurus by an inch. What would happen next? We held our breath. Allosaurus darted close and took a bite. 
Then it moved back and waited. Stegosaurus got weaker and weaker. It had become food for Allosaurus. Plus, whatever Allosaurus does not eat will feed other dinosaurs too. At my old school, we never got this close to predators. I guess that Stegosaurus won't become a dinosaur fossil. No, it's becoming a dinosaur dinner. As we ran for the time machine, Miss Frizzle pointed out some strange birds. The first birds appeared in the late Jurassic, she said. Then she pushed the fast forward button and shouted, Mayosara, here we come. We still didn't find Mayosara nests. Come on, let's go look for them. The alarm went off again. We looked out and then we freaked out. Once again, we had stopped too soon. Here we are in the late Cretaceous period, announced Miss Frizzle. At this time, there was a sea right in the middle of our continent. We're in the same place 25 million years later. How time flies! That's not all that flies. Out the windows, enormous sea reptiles swam by. Overhead, Flying reptiles glided past, dipping their beaks in the water to catch fish. We were getting a little wet, so the frizz set the clock ahead again. I'm homesick. I'm seasick. At my old school, the bus didn't leak. Can't we find a drier time, Miss Frizzle? The next thing we knew, we had traveled forward two million years. Now. We were at the very end of the Cretaceous period. This was the time of the last dinosaurs. This was the time we had been looking for. The sea has dried up in this part of the world class. This is the time of the Mayasara. You let a couple million years go by and look what happens. As soon as we got off the bus, we saw the Cretaceous world was different. The weather was cooler. There were colorful flowers and fruits everywhere, and there were lots of new plant-eating dinosaurs. These plant-eaters could chew better than any other dinosaurs, said Miss Frizzle. They had terrific teeth for grinding, and they had cheeks. Cheeks keep food from falling out, so plant-eaters do not lose food when they have already chewed. Cheeks? I didn't know cheeks were so important. We were watching the plant eaters chew when some tyrannosaurs approached. They were some of the largest meat eaters ever. Their mouths were giant biting machines with 60 sharp stabbing teeth. Uh oh, here comes trouble. Tyrannosaurus trouble. Some other dinosaurs had more teeth, but Tyrannosaurs had enormous teeth. I feel sorry for the Tooth Fairy. The Tyrannosaurs were scary enough. Then a pack of Trudon showed up too. They were small, but there were a lot of them. They began circling the bus to see what it was. We sized up the situation and ran. I hope you're observing the Trudon class. Notice the slashing claw on each back foot. We'd like to observe them, Miss Frizzle, but we have to leave right away. In a hurry, this instant. In other words, now. As we came over the crest of a hill, we saw an incredible sight. It was the Mayosara nesting ground. Wow, look at all the babies. It's dinosaur daycare. We weren't the only ones who had found the Mayasara. The Truden had followed us. They invaded the nesting ground. The Mayasara parents defended their young. All at once, a sandstorm blew up. In minutes, a thick layer of sand covered the dinosaurs. These dinosaurs will all be buried. Poor dinosaurs. Poor us. Everything happened so fast. 
but there was no way we could help the dinosaurs. Maybe they would become fossils. Oh no, I dropped my model Mayasara. Hurry up and run. Back in the bus, Miss Frizzle drove forward in time. We thought we were going home, but on the way, the bus screeched to a stop. We are in the very last minutes of the Cretaceous period, said Miss Frizzle. A bright light was shining in the sky. Notice that asteroid, said the Frizz. It's a huge rock from outer space. Soon it will hit the Earth. The asteroid will cause an enormous explosion. Black soot will fill the air and block out the sun. The plants won't grow and the millions of living things will become extinct, including the dinosaurs. Miss Frizzle, could we leave before the asteroid hits? The Frizz pushed the forward button and we started again. We're only 65 million years from home, class. Step on it, please. When the alarm rang, we were back in our own time. The paleontologists were worried about us and came looking for us. We gave them a tip on a fossil site. Then we waved goodbye and drove back to school. Go that way about a hundred steps and start digging. I'll bet you'll find some male Sara nests. If you say so, Val, we'll send you a copy of our video. In the classroom, we made a chart of our trip to the dinosaurs. Just as we were finishing it, people started coming in for a visitor's day. My Silophysis lived in the Triassic period. My Allosaurus belongs in the Jurassic. Where should I put my Triceratops? I lost my dinosaur. Too bad. Hey Arnold, wasn't that dinosaur adventure amazing? This is my idea of adventure. That's my boy. The visitors admired everything. They had never seen such fabulous projects, such wonderful books, or such an incredible video. And of course, they had never met a teacher quite like Miss Frizzle. Your bones are the best, honey. Thanks, Gran. Hey, look at those special effects. The dinosaurs seem so real. Why, Flory, this reads as if you were really there. It ought to. Your teacher seems like an interesting person. She loves science. She loves lizards too. And test tubes and slime and mold and experiments. And she designs all her own clothes. Thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe button. See you next time.